Hello everyone, this is Mitch, and welcome to episode 3 of my Let's Play Part 2. So, Part 1, we designed a rocket to do a contract, complete this contract of exploring the moon, which is to complete a flyby, gather science data from the moon, and to return. We've designed a vehicle, so I'm going to show you if you can't be bothered to watch the previous part. I did some science between episodes and I've unlocked this node for the large fuel tank, this one for more fuel tanks and engines, and this node for more science, battery packs, and just good stuff, really. So we've created our vehicle and this is the building, the space center, sorry, what it looks like. This is all level one and so that means we don't have maneuver nodes we don't have extra tonnage we don't have extra parts that's it that's all we've got and we are going to have a flyby of the moon today so the rocket is the moon launcher so if you want details about the rocket go watch the previous part right now we're going to launch right away Jeb as the pilot this is the rocket launch vessel. So here we are on the launch pan. Activate the SAS and launch. So we've got to start by making orbit. So this is just what we're going to do. We're going to make as efficient of a gravity turn as possible. I forgot to save the changes to the gimbal to avoid the wobbling you've just seen. There we go, much more stable. So we're going to make a gravity turn. We're going to try to make it as efficient as possible because this thing has just enough fuel for the flyby and the return, basically. So let's not be too aggressive here. Turning slowly, following the prograde marker, staying inside the prograde marker, very important. So we're turning very slowly, accelerating. And the goal here is to get above 15 kilometers before staging, really. To get the maximum efficiency from the Terrier engine. Well, not exactly the maximum, but close to. Now this is a bit aggressive of a turn. Let's stick closer to the western limit of the marker. Good. Good. Still on course. Reach target altitude before staging. Very good. Accelerating and staging very soon. Base bar and moving on. So now we want to check the apoapsis. Still very low, so we're going to keep burning roughly like this, even though it's not going to be exactly prograde, because we want to gain more altitude as much as possible. So we're going to leave the prograde marker. We're reaching 30 kilometers altitude, so aerodynamics are not going to tumble the rocket anymore. It should stay nice, just like that. Let's see. Apoapsis is raising. I might actually want to raise it a little faster, so we're going to turn back this way. Look back at the rocket. Checking fuel. So normally if I do this right, I should have above uh, 100 units of liquid fuel before trying to go to the moon. And this is important because we don't want to be stranded in space. So reaching an apoapsis of 55 kilometers, 56, 57, good. We're still accelerating sideways, which is more efficient than going straight up to 70 kilometers and then turning the rocket. So we're going in the upper 60s, so we're going to turn the rocket back towards its apoapsis as much as possible. So 
now we're almost at target altitude for orbit. There we go. We can turn further sideways. And then it's just a matter of time. Burning the precious fuel. There we go, there we go. Actually even point ourselves a little lower. We don't need to get very high apoapsis here. Just orbit. Not too far from the apoapsis either. Let's actually start... Well, start actually stop the engine very soon. There we go. 80 kilometers, we're almost in space. So we want to burn at apoapsis to uh, ensure maximum efficiency. We're just like a couple hundreds uh, delta V away from orbit. So this should be fine. Let's time accelerate a little bit. We might lose signal soon, but that doesn't matter because we have a pilot flying the rocket. Reaching apoapsis soon. Pointing prograde. Accelerating again. Let's see if my calculations and tests were about right. Are we going to have a little bit more fuel or a little bit less? We're going to have a little bit less, but that's fine. Than in the previous episode. We had exactly this much fuel and we were in orbit in the previous one. Now we're just a little short. We do have a periapsis though. So point again almost perfectly prograde. Burn the extra bit. And get the periapsis above 70 kilometers. There we go, perfect. So now we have a non-upgraded space center and we want to get to the moon. How do we do it? Here's the trick. If you position your screen so the moon is just about perfectly on the right, then you need to burn when you're just about perfectly south if you're looking at the screen this way. Basically to go from low carbon orbit to get an encounter with the moon, you need to shoot for about a quarter orbit in front of the moon. So the moon is spinning this way. I'm not sure if you can see but this line is brighter than this line and this shows you where the moon is going. The bright side is the back of the moon basically and the darker side here is in front of it. So we want to catch up to it so we want to shoot in front of it obviously. So right about there. No maneuver nodes. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait until we're right about there and we're going to fire the rocket prograde. And we don't have um, uh, solar panels here so we want to preserve our electric charge as much as possible, so I'm going to turn off the SAS because we don't need it right now. So let's time accelerate a little bit until we're just about there. Good enough. Quick save. And let's point ourselves roughly prograde. Let's turn on the SAS to make sure we're stable. And let's fire the rocket. All right. So now we've got to wait until the apoapsis raises to the altitude of the moon, which is going to take most of our fuel. This is this is the big burn here, and we're just going to go close to the moon and then fly back down. So we want to have a bit of fuel left so we can slow down after encountering the moon. So burning, 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 burning. Apoapsis raising. Now we're not going to know if we are actually going to get an encounter beforehand, but the moon is big enough that it should be fairly certain that we're going to get an orbit. An encounter, I mean. There we go, that's just about the altitude of the moon.
numerous oh speed record we have broken all right so now is the moment of truth are we going to get that moon encounter so let's speed up don't care about the uh sas don't want to burn the electric charge it's time warp even more so now you might be saying oh but you're going to be way in front of the moon not really because watch the speed as we're going up to our apoapsis, we're slowing down way, way, way down. And the moon is catching up to us very fast. Are we going to get that encounter? Are we going to get it? Slow down. Slow down. Very close. The moon is catching up to us. Yes. Congratulations, everyone! We have achieved a flyby of the moon. That's it. First contract here, milestones, and contract to explore the moon. Time for some science. Now, we could actually probably lower our periapsis with regards to the moon, but... Eh, not before upgrading everything and having maneuver nodes and everything... It's not worth it. We have just barely enough fuel to slow down afterwards. So, let's do the science right away. Crew report. Eight points. Materials Bay, Science Junior. Forty points. Service Bay for the Mystery Goo. Sixteen points. Plus another... Almost four points, I would think. Because here, with the green bar... We're not getting full value with uh, only one Mystery Goo. So the second one should provide, yeah, roughly four points. It's about three quarters. There's going to be a tiny bit of science left, but two is very good. Another 12.8 from the thermometer and 19.2 from the barometer. Even though it's in space and there's no atmosphere, I know. So that's it, we're just gonna fly by the moon like this. Very high, but that's fine. We've completed the contract, closed the Science Junior's bay, and time warp back down to Kerbin. We're going to wait to see what our orbit, orbit is going to be after leaving the sphere of influence of the moon. Here we go, blitzing by. Bye-bye to the moon, and our orbit has actually lowered. And it's on a collision course with Kerbin. We don't like that. We want a smoother re-entry, so we are going to burn prograde, even though we are not exactly at apoapsis. It's still going to work. Let's do this. It should st still be quite efficient because our speed is really, really low. There we go, changing the orbit, changing the orbit. Still have plenty of fuel. Periapsis should appear. Yes. That should be safe. We're actually going to go... Let's use a bit of an aero braking maneuver here. This should be safe. Let's quick save to be sure. And let's time warp back down to curb in atmosphere. There we go, there we go. Going to enter the atmosphere. Now we have a level 1 pilot, so we can tell him to sit perfectly retrograde. We don't want to do that too much because it's going to burn some electric charge, but it should be fine. So let's time warp twice the speed in the atmosphere. See if we actually slow down a fair bit. Let's try not to burn the engine, hopefully. But it's an engine, so it's fairly heat tolerant normally. Yeah, it's gonna be fine. So there's a tiny bit of aerial braking. I'm not sure it did a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> so 
So, still fine. We're going to time warp back out of the atmosphere. Times four, not exactly safe because it's physics warp, but that's fine. Shouldn't be anything too bad happening. We haven't burnt much electric charge. We're back in space, turning the SAS off and time warping back around for another slowdown. Reaching Apoapsis. Jeb has been in space for three days now. He's got to be wanting to go to the toilet, but that's fine. So let's make a little bit more of an aggressive braking maneuver here. We're going to let the rocket spin around to save electric charge. SAS, and there we go. And let's go down this much, an extra five kilometers. Should be fine. Let's point the rocket back towards apoapsis because when we're going to be at periapsis, we're going to be facing opposite directions. So we're going to be pointing roughly retrograde already. Quick save again in case this maneuver is a little bit harsh on the spaceship. And let's time warp again. Zoom, coming in, atmosphere, there we go, time warp some more, and slowing down, atmospheric effects, a bit hard on the engine, that's fine. Let's point ourselves retrograde better so we don't burn the fuel tanks or whatever in the way. It's getting a little hot, but it's fine. We're gonna start going back up soon. Soon. Yep. Gaining altitude again. What does this do? Uh, we've lost at least 2 million meters apoapsis. This is getting better. So there we have it, going back up the atmosphere. There we go, there we go. Now we could actually burn the remainder of our fuel, well most of the remainder of our fuel at periapsis to slow us down further. This would be more efficient as well. Hey, 5 million meters, not bad. Let's go for another round. Speeding, speeding, speeding. Zoom, zoom, zoom. We're going to hit roughly the same spot in space. Uh, not in space, but in atmosphere. Plenty of electric charge with that one battery. Coming in. So at roughly 43 kilometers, we want to burn a bit of fuel to slow us down further. There we go, there we go. So let's watch, let's keep about 10 units of fuel. To make our final re-entry maneuver. There we go. All right. And now apoapsis is much more manageable. It's going to keep going down. Because normally from orbit you are going about 2200 delta V, uh, not delta V, but meters per second in orbit. Right now at periapsis we're doing almost 3000, so that's significantly faster. Thankfully this time we've packed a heat shield, but I'm still going to use some aerobraking to make sure the vehicle is safe. 
So going back out of the atmosphere. We could do another round just to be safe. One thing you don't want to happen, well, you could want to happen, is <clears throat> to um, actually lower your apoapsis down into atmosphere during one of your aero braking maneuvers, because then you're going to spend a lot of time in the upper atmosphere having aerodynamic effects, eating, heating up your spaceship by a fair amount, so you don't want that. Periapsis has barely moved. Let's make one more round. Why not? Going in. Let's zoom by. It should be fine. Jeb is holding retrograde. Coming in hot. So lowering apoapsis further and further. There we go. So we've bled off about 200, maybe a little bit more uh, meters per second at periapsis. It's not bad. It's still fast, but that's fine. About to reach space again. We could go for a more aggressive braking maneuver again. So let's time warp to apoapsis. Five day in space. Sorry, Jeb. Let's actually go about 39, 38, let's say. There we go. 38 kilometers periapsis, quick saving, pointing retrograde, and going in for one final braking maneuver. This wouldn't really be needed. I mean, I've got the heat shield but it's just safer, and if we want to shoot for the Kerbal Space Center coming down, it's a lot easier if you can manage where your periapsis and apoapsis are in relation to the Kerbal Space Center. Now this might be a little rough for the uh, engine, but still fine. There we go. And going back up. There we go. This was a much more significant slowdown. Can we see the Kerbal Space Center from here? No. Well, actually, let's keep speeding. All right, much more manageable. The Kerbal Space Center is here. Is it going to be right above our periapsis? I don't think so for the next flyby. Mm, no, we're going to be ahead of it still. Let's break one more time. On the next round we should be... Let's slow down time so Jeb can actually point retrograde. So on the next pass we should be able to land this thing not too far away from the Kerbal Space Center. So we should bounce back but we're still going to slow down significantly this time. There we go, there we go. Periapsis has lowered itself, but that's fine.
Apoapsis is lowering nicely. We should skip above the atmosphere again. Very nice. So now we're reaching speeds that are closer to low carbon orbit. Still a little fast, but it's still pretty good. All right, going back to space. So final maneuver. We're still going to land far off from the uh, space center. Let's do something a little aggressive here. Let's go to uh, Apoapsis. Let's see with the rotation of the planet. Yeah, so here what we're going to do to get us close, or at least probably close, to the space center, we're going to burn retrograde again. And lower the periapsis by a fair bit. Now, this is definitely final approach with a periapsis this low. We're not going to skip off the atmosphere again. Now, how does this look from above? Given the rotation and everything, we might land somewhere over there. So let's go a little bit more aggressive and actually do this. Now we're sure to land and I'm just trying to get us close to the Kerbal Space Center for maximum efficiency, at least in terms of uh, funds returns. Where is Kerbin? There it is. So let's quick say we still have enough fuel to make changes if we wanted. And let's see what's this going to do. So we're still very high. We're going to enter the atmosphere, I think, just above the Curse Bowl Space Center. With a very aggressive descent. So let's slow us down further, actually. Burn the rest of the fuel. So there is the Kerbal Space Center. And that's the rest of the fuel, since we're not going to be able to land it anyway. Let's turn to separate the stage away from us. And let's hold retrograde and land. So normally you wouldn't want this steep of a re-entry, but since we have a heat shield, we should be fine. Should be plenty fine. So let's go. Final approach. Going down, down, down. So we're not going to be exactly super close from the space center, but that's fine. It's only funds, which we have plenty of right now. Let's just make sure we land safely. So we're entering the hot part of the atmosphere here. Slowing down pretty slowly, but that's going to change very soon. Burning the ablator as intended. Slowing down faster and faster. And we do have a drogue shoot, so we should be fine for the landing as well. So, oh well for aiming at the Kerbal Space Center, but unless you're playing a really hard career where funds are limited, this is plenty fine. There's no other advantage to, uh, or bonus to landing closer to the uh, Space Center other than recovering more funds. So, Jeb is having issues holding prograde, but that's uh, retrograde, but that's fine. Don't need the SAS anymore. Each shield is irrelevant at this point. Falling down nicely. We can actually deploy the drogue shoot safely. There we go. 
falling down, falling down. All right, this is nice and safe. We can open the other chutes, and I think I did set them up, yes. At safe altitudes, but at altitudes that won't keep us in the air for too long. Let's time warp. Again, four times is a bit harsh on the physics, can tear apart your ships, so patience is better. Two times is pretty safe. So at two kilometers, 2.5 kilometers, the drogue chutes will deploy. There we go. And then closer to the ground, the other two chutes will also deploy and take us down safely. This is still <laughs> much too fast. There we go. Almost a safe speed. That's pretty safe, but still a little bit harsh. But we're going to get the second shoot about now. Take us under 6 meters per second, which is plenty safe. And now we can just time accelerate down. So, flyby of the moon with an unupgraded space center and just a few flights worth of science. So if you've enjoyed, please leave a like, subscribe, and for feedback, leave one in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.